Okay, so a couple weeks ago, I ran the Miami 100 mile ultra marathon, and here are the stats from it. I ran 101.84 miles. It took me 21 hours, 17 minutes, and 28 seconds. I took, get this, 179,636 steps. And can you guess how many calories it was? It was 14,423. All right, if you don't know me, my name is Pierre Shao. I'm 23 years old and I've ran 12 marathons and I think over 15 ultra marathons, including three 200 mile races. And the Miami 100 mile ultra marathon was my fifth 100 mile race of that distance. And so in this video, I wanna break down for you how I fueled for than Miami 100. So I got this fueling sheet that my crew filled out throughout the entire race to their best of their ability. It may not be 100% accurate, but it's got to be like 95 or so percent uh, accurate. But by the way, I don't say the amount of races I've done or whatever to brag. Really, I just want you to know that I do have some experience doing these races and I've learned a lot from the mistakes that I've made and things that I've done and tried over the years. Okay, so first I want to set the context for the Miami 100 mile ultra marathon because the temperature, elevation, the elevation gain, there's a couple different factors that will determine how you fuel for a race. So this race was at the end of September in Miami, Florida. So it's hot, it's humid. And so that makes hydration a very important part of your strategy. Also, just a side note with the Miami 100 mile ultra marathon, it's a little bit different in that it's fully crew supported. And so there are no aid stations. There are just five checkpoints along the way where some people who don't have a crew, they'll put a drop bag and fill up with water there. But for the majority of the course, you're actually running alongside major roads and gas stations and whatnot. And so some people will go into the gas stations, get a drink, Gatorade, food, whatnot, to help them keep going. But it's definitely a difficult race to do that way. I had a crew of several people who drove around in a white uh, Suburban to help fuel crew and pace me throughout the entire race. The nice thing about it was because of this, because there are no aid stations, we could crew as much as we wanted to. And so my crew would stop every two to three miles to get me different water bottles, fuel, and then that way I didn't have to carry a vest so or, or much else. The whole race, I didn't run with a running vest, which I'll typically do, especially for a trail ultra marathon. But for this race, since I was seeing them every two or three miles, I didn't have to do that. So getting into how I feel for the race, leading up to the race, I did a carb load. I wasn't super strict as I am in marathons with the carb load, but I did get in a bunch of carbs leading up. Some of my favorite things to have are fruit, specifically dates, dried mangoes are really good. Other dried fruits are great. I like rice, I like sweet potatoes. Those really sit well with me, give me some sustenance, and I enjoy them, they're good for me. And so that's what I did leading up to the race. As far as the morning of the race, what I did was I had a Morton 160 solid, and uh, it t basically tastes like a Rice Krispie treat. I had some dates, a serving of dates, and then so about 70 grams of carbs in the morning a little bit over an hour before the race. And then I also did a bottle of water with some electrolytes. I use switchback electrolytes. It's got a thousand milligrams of sodium in the bottle. And so I just sipped on that in the morning. I got up, started eating, had a little bit of coffee, had those electrolytes and read my Bible. And then I just hung out, got the rest of the stuff ready for the race. I actually had to make my sandwiches during the race I'll get into, I made some sandwiches. I didn't make the sandwiches during the race. I ate the sandwiches during the race. And so I had to get them ready in the morning. And so 
hung out for a little bit, assembled the rest of my gear. I didn't get up too much earlier than the race start. The race start was at like five. I think I got up at like 3.15 or so because I didn't want to be up forever. Wanted to get some good sleep. So that's what happened before the race, then getting into the race. So this race, you should know, this very hot race. It was very humid. It was probably over 80% humidity throughout the entire race. I even remember I was running with a group of people at the beginning and they were like, yeah, I don't think anyone's going to break 20 hours today because it's so humid. So it was a very humid year. It was probably got up to about 90, a little bit over 90 degrees Fahrenheit and then probably 80 to 90 plus percent humidity. You're there in Florida right near the ocean. So there's a ton of humidity. So what that means is that the fueling is extremely important. Your hydration is extremely important because when you get behind on hydration, it is hard to make up. And so also I want to tell you at the end of the video, I'm going to break down like in total, how many bottles of water I drank, how many calories I ate that's on the sheet. Um, and then also how many milligrams of sodium I had for the entire race. And so during the race, essentially my strategy was I'd see my crew about every two to three miles. Every time I'd see them, they'd give me a new bottle and I would alternate between one bottle. They're about 16.9 ounces. They're just like the typical bottles that you get in a case of water from the grocery store. These were just really easy to use and hand out because I could carry them easily. They're also really light when you're done with them, so they don't weigh you down, and it just makes things super simple. Also, the switch pack sticks that they give out were super easy for my crew to just tear apart, pour in, and then they knew that's one serving, as opposed to trying to dunk in a tube and, and fill it up that way. So, essentially every time I saw my crew, which was every two to three miles, I'd switch off and get a new bottle. So. The bottles that they gave me, again, were about 17 ounces, 16.9 to be exact. And then one was just water, the other would be water and switchback electrolytes, which had a thousand milligrams of sodium. So I'd switch off, I'd say water, switchback, water, switchback, every time I saw them. And then also typically about on the hour mark, I would have them give me fuel. So I was wearing these half tights that had pockets in them that were really nice. I don't like wearing a running belt. It messes up something with my digestion, but these half tights, I love half tights. They're great for not chafing and they're great to hold stuff if you've got good half tights with pockets. So I would hold these gels in my pockets. I'd hold chafing lube, wet wipes when I had to use the restroom and uh, I'd hold the gels of course. And, and so that was super helpful to have the half tights to help hold those things. So I do the water, I do basically two to three bottles of water per hour. So that's a lot of water. It's like 51 ounces or so. I typically only do 17 to 34 ounces of water per hour, but I was getting way more in because of the heat, because of the humidity. And then as far as fueling goes, I was doing a Morton 160 gel. So I, I take that on the hour mark and then on the 40 minute mark, I would take one of the precision fuel and hydration chews. These have 30 grams of carbs. The Morton gels have 40. So my goal was to get about 70 grams of carbs per hour for this race. And so that was the majority of the fuel that I did, the Morton gels and then the precision fuel. They taste like marshmallows. They're actually pretty good. I did get a little bit fatigued, but my plan was every four hours, to have a ham and butter sandwich, the ones I was talking about at the beginning where I was making them before the race. And so ham and butter sandwich, really good, really easy, easy to get down the butter. It doesn't dry out your mouth as much, which is nice during the, the race, makes the bread more moist and so easier to get down. So I did that like the hour of the fourth hour, the hour of the 12th, the hour of the 16th, and so on and so forth. And so then I pretty much stuck to this throughout the race. And then towards the end of the race, what happened was I also got these untapped maple syrup fueling kind of gels, which have 26 grams of carbs. 
and I would, instead of doing the precision fuel, I did the untapped. And so these helped me get in some fuel, especially because towards the end of the race, you get fatigued to the flavor of what you've been having for 16, 18 plus hours, and then you want something else. So what I found was the maple syrup was actually really easy to digest and really, really helpful. And so that was really good. Also, some things I'm leaving out is during the race, I had probably three to four Cokes. I don't drink soda typically, but Coke is just so great because it's just like straight sugar. And uh, there's a little bit of caffeine, a little bit of kick and uh, a little bit of change in flavor, which was nice during the race. And then the, I think once or twice, I had a packet of Honey Stinger Chews, which are similar to just different gels uh, made by Honey Stinger. They're great, just simple carbs and uh, easy to get down. So I didn't really have much problem getting down fuel, even though it was hot during the race. I really just had to drink a ton of water. And honestly, I probably could have done a better job at teaching my body how to get used to taking in so much water by practicing that, but my body was able to absorb it, which was really good and was able to get it done. So that's what I had. I did two to three bottles, sometimes four actually, throughout the entire race, throughout the 20 plus hours, just over 21. I did the Morton 160s precision fuel gels, and then the untapped, by the way, I'm not sponsored by any of them. I just like their different gels and uh, I'm still figuring out what's great, what's the best, but I've really liked the Morton gels. Those have done me really well. Use those for the 251 marathon, use them for ultras, pretty much works for everything. The untapped and the precision were new to me. So that's what I did to fuel for the Miami 100 and here, is the totals of what I had. So drum roll, please. <laughs> I had 31 bottles of water, 20 bottles of electrolytes. So that's 51 bottles total. And if I did 20 hours, that's like two and a half bottles per hour. It looks like between water and electrolytes total. And then I had 20,000 and 30 milligrams of sodium. Dang, that's a lot of sodium. And I had 7,502 calories during that. That's crazy. But I mean, I did a lot. I mean, I burned 14,000 or so, which is crazy. So anyway, that's how I fueled for the Miami 100. I hope that helped. Share it with a friend that's training for an 100 mile race if it helped you and you think it could help them and comment below what you want me to make videos about. I'm really looking at the comments to see what you guys want, how I can add the most value. And uh, yeah, really, I'm just here to help you run your next race and uh, go after it. So that's it for today. Go out and run your race.